Welcome back to the Depression Marathon that is Hollow Knight and uh, Kafka's Metamorphosis. I'm Sint. I'm Axion. And uh, yeah, we've already introduced what we're talking about. Uh, are you ready to be sad? I'm already sad. Yay! So, um, we actually last video touched on the topic I wanted to talk about this time, which is the fact that it is very, very easy to interpret the metamorphosis as an allegory for um, disability and long-term care. And I think that actually goes a long way to explaining a lot of uh, his sister Greta's behavior. So, um, to explain... Hi, puppy. Uh, we talked about how Gregor um, wanted to help his sister go to school. He, so we obviously have the inference from the text that he and his sister have been very, very close, and he wants her to have an opportunity that he never had. So um, he actually had saved up for her to go to, to the conservatory and was going to make the announcement later that year, but obviously that's not going to happen now because they need the money he'd set aside to help t uh, take care of him since he can't work anymore. Um, after Gregor becomes um, unable to physically work anymore, the family has to take on the excess, the excess work to take, uh, take care of him now, which is a nice role reversal, except the family doesn't see it as kind of a karmic how now you have to care for the one who's cared for you they see it as you know a burden and his father has always seen his son mostly as a source of income and not you know a person in his own right his father resents him the most so his sister ends up taking the lead on actually caring for him because his mother's nerves won't let her which means all of the burden of taking care of Gregor and tending to his needs and discerning what those new needs are and keeping track of it and making sure he's not forgotten lies solely on the youngest person in the family, the one who has been closest to him. So that means she's the one who gets to see her older brother, who she's always been close with, turn into this monster. He doesn't resemble her brother anymore. One second, puppy. He doesn't even communicate anymore she can't he's for all intents and purposes what she knew of as her brother is gone there's just a husk remaining in his place i have to deal with her um why don't you give me your thoughts while i tend to that so any of us who have been in a family with someone who's been ill for a long time, or been in a situation where you have to serve as the primary caretaker for somebody with an extended or chronic illness, probably understand this a bit better than some others. Um, my, gran my paternal grandmother near the end of her life, uh, she died of brain cancer. And during the last few years of her life, she was, understandably, uh, deteriorating mentally and had memory issues and, you know, all of the stuff that comes with, with brain cancer and associated situations. So, uh, my grandfather and... Uh, my uncle and his family that lived in the area spent a lot of their time caring for her uh, in the last few years of her life. And, yeah. So, I, I honestly think this is what turns it kind of into a tragedy if you read it with this lens. It's not an act caused from any intentional malice. It's a freak accident, a freak occurrence, and since there's no explanation for why it happened, it leaves the implication that this could happen to anyone, not just Gregor Samsa. Okay. So, over the course of the story, we watch the deterioration of his relationship with his sister, the person closest to him, as she just gets beaten down by life, bears the brunt of like her family's irritation that she's wasting so much time on, essentially, this drain this leech on the family now and 
Gregor can't even thank her for what she does. Being the long-term caretaker is a thankless job. Mm. You're expected to do it because, well, why wouldn't you? Are you a heartless bastard? Are you really going to leave this person to languish alone? We're not going to help you, but shouldn't you be doing this? Shouldn't you be taking it on yourself? And she does. And she's just exhausted from it. She can see the strain Gregor is putting on everyone around them. Because her parents aren't behaving normally anymore. Her mother's a, a nervous wreck. Uh, her father is just bitter. Um, yeah. And eventually, just there's... What is the point? You're going through the motions. He doesn't even seem to notice. He's getting worse. He's. I just wish he could say something or do something or show some sign of improvement that my that what I'm doing even matters in the grand scheme of things. But it doesn't. He's not going to change. He's not going to get better. I'm just delaying the inevitable out of a sense of misguided obligation at this point because is he even still capable of understanding anything? I don't know. He can't tell me. He's essentially comatose. He's there and moving, but since he cannot communicate with anyone, as far as the family understands, he might as well be in a vegetative state. Yep. And there's, obviously, there's someone who is uh, in such a state that would be similar. And there's also people who have conditions that are chronic and also prevent communication. Um, yep. I'm sure you know one that I'm thinking of. I'm going to leave that to you to speak up about if you want to. But, um... Yeah, and what honestly is the point I want to get at is, um, well, caretaker fatigue is real. Mm -hmm. Caretaker burnout is real. And it's something that's very, very difficult to talk about because it essentially means you come to resent someone that you have always deeply cared for and loved because of just how tired you are from the extra labor and emotional labor of caring for them with no discernible effect of it. It's, again, it's thankless. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice your time, your energy, your money, everything into caring for this person out of familial love, obligation, whatever the case may be. And in Gregor's case, he can't thank her. He can't show any improvement. It's just it's just a drain, at least from the family's perspective. We at least have the benefit of hearing Gregor's perspective from the narrator, but he's losing his humanity. He's becoming more and more bug-like. He's, he's no longer the same person by the end, except that he still cares about his family enough that he doesn't want to be a burden. And it's not until his sister finally breaks under the strain after... Um, their tenants who have not been told about their uh, invalid relative living in the next room see him freak out and threaten to sue the family for emotional damages that she's like she's just she loses it because they can't afford that they can't afford everything that's going on and it's happening as a direct result of Gregor not being able to work they have to let the rooms because Gregor can't work and they need the extra income and she can't take it anymore. It's just, it's a, it's a very, it's a cruel thought, but it is a very human thought of, I have been pushed to my breaking point and I can't do this anymore. I just wish it could be over with, even if that means he's gone. And I think that resonates a lot more strongly today than it would have oh three years ago maybe yeah definitely for more people than it would have then i i don't doubt, doubt there were people there were definitely people back three years ago who would have seen it for what it was but it is definitely a more recognizable situation now yeah so when I first read this, it seemed just like it's needlessly cruel that, of course, it's the sister. 
his sister who's been the one taking care of him the most it, it's surprising that she was the one who said i who, who made the comment that finally pushes gregor over the edge but like, i i actually assumed it would have been the father just saying something like that because that would be more in line with what we'd seen but in the lens of caretaker burnout it absolutely makes sense that greta is the one to break Why are we getting creepy ominous music? Because probably a boss is about to happen. Hi! We do, we do have a big open room! Oh, hello! Well. But yeah, and we can see that a little bit with his mother too. She wants to care for him, but she has a health condition of her own. I believe the text tells us that she's asthmatic. So she has to balance being able to, you know, be you know, maternal with her own physical and mental needs, and she proves unable to cope with the strain. Uh, she passes out when she sees what Gregor has become, and uh, she can't handle it. It's honestly really sad. So, yeah, the weight falls on his sister, and only his sister, because her mother can't handle it, and her father won't handle it. And there's only so much a person can take without having an actual support system. And that goes for both Gregor and Greta here. Because, well, Gregor finally... Hi, what can, I, what can you do, puppy? Uh, Gregor finally gives up on life when the last of his support structure, his sister, finally says she can't do it anymore. She can't take it anymore. Just end it. And he does, rather than cause her more pain. And Greta comes to that because she has no support system. Her family just expects her to take care of him and have a job and everything else. So, yeah, it's... I honestly have a lot more sympathy for her on reflection than I did on my first read. Because, yeah, no one in the story has it easy. Because uh, if they did, it wouldn't really be a Kafka, would it? Not really. So, do you have any other thoughts you'd like to add on this uh, extended metaphor? This guy is absolutely losing his mind. Too bad this isn't Pokemon, because I could say that, yes, he is quite hair across with you. Oh, my word. It's anything to lighten the mood right now, okay? This is actually so, trickier than I thought it would be. Yep, so one way or another, at the end of this boss fight, I think we can go ahead and end the video. Because yep. I think I have taken the metaphor as far as I can without More or less, really yeah. beating it into the ground. Okay, I think I've mostly figured his patterns out. And despite the size of that mace, his reach is not actually that long. So it's, it's a lot easier to dodge that it looked like it was going to be. Oh, he's dead. All right. Heal, please. Alright, I think that's a pretty good place to go ahead and call it then, so we will resume next time. Yep. See y'all then.